Hello people, in this video let us look at this uh, topic rhinoscleroma. Rhino means what? Nose. Right? And now you are talking about some scleroma. Scleroma. Oma. Right? So basically this is a uh, granulomatous disease of the nose. So a granular formation. Granuloma. Right? So where do you have you seen all these kind of things? We have already seen granulomas etc. and tuberculosis, leprosy etc. So we are talking about rhinoscleroma here. So in rhinoscleroma also there can be granuloma. So basically, in granulomatous disease of nose, you have bacterial, fungal and others. Now in bacterial, what and all you have? Tuberculosis, leprosy, lupus, syphilis and rhinoscleroma. It is, rhinoscleroma is caused by Klebsiella bacteria. Then under fungal, you have rhinosporidiosis, aspergillosis, etc. So under unspecified causes, you have Wegener's granulomatous and uh, sarcoidosis, etc. Uh, basically, what you need to understand is that... Um, we are talking about rhinoscleroma. So when somebody says scleroma, you should remember it is Klebsiella, bacteria caused granulomatous condition. And rhinosporidiosis is spore, spores forming. So that is fungus. Okay. So what is rhinoscleroma? Something to do with the nose. Something has affected the nose. And uh, what is uh, what has affected? It is this Klebsiella bacteria. Okay. It is a gram negative bacteria. So which type of Klebsiella? As simple as this. Klebsiella Rhinoscleromatis. The name itself is of the bacteria is rhinoscleromatis. So this is uh, what rhinoscleroma. It is caused by what? It is a chronic, uh, that means it's a long time running disease. Uh, granulomatis disease caused by gram negative bacillus called Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis or Frisk bacillus. Frisk bacillus. Okay. So basically what you have understood till now. So this is the condition they are talking about. Okay. So this is caused by what? Rhinos, uh, uh, Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis, which is a bacteria. This is a chronic granulomatis, exactly like tuberculosis and leprosy, chronic conditions they are, right? Similarly, this is also a chronic condition. For a long time, these uh, things will be running. Suddenly, it will not come up, okay? Now, uh, this is endemic in several parts of the world. That means it is prevalent, it is always there kind of a thing. In India, mostly in North India, okay? So basically the disease starts with the nose, okay, basically they don't know the mode of infection, maybe you can do some research on it and find out and tell from where this Klebsiella uh, granuloma, uh, yeah, sorry, Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis came, okay, so mode of infection is not known, but it starts with the nose and then what it happens, it starts extending to the pharynx, the nasopharynx, then the oropharynx, then the larynx, um, larynx mostly they are saying the subglottic region, then it goes to the trachea and the bronchi, too bad, too bad. So basically it starts at the nose and it starts going till the bronchi. So this is basically very uh, gender uh, uh, impartial. It will affect both men and women. So let us look at the clinical features. So there are three stages of the disease. Atrophic stage, granulomatous stage and cicatricial stage. Granulomatous stage makes more sense for us, right? Because it's a granulomatous condition. So atrophic stage, there will be, uh, it will be very similar to atrophic rhinitis. They are saying that will be foul smelling purulent nasal discharge and crusting will be there. So uh, this was there, right? An atrophic rhinitis, rhinitis, foul smelling, purulent nasal discharge, right? Then coming to granulomatous stage, remember this guy, Woody. So basically, here you will have um, the Woody feel. So basically, Woody feel of what? Lower part of external nose and upper lip giving Woody feel, okay? So basically, granulomatous nodules form in nasal mucosa. There is subdermal infiltration. Okay. There is woody feel. Nodules are painless and non-ulcerative. So you can see here, there is no ulceration, right? It is intact epithelium. And there is woody feel. Basically, you have to understand that much here. That the nodules are painless and non-ulcerative. Very happy, happy. It's like a toy only, right? Painless, non-ulcerative. But woody, woody feel. Okay. This is all in that granulomatous stage. So now where are we? Now we will come to cicatricial stage. Cicatricial means what? Some healing stage. So here there will be stenosis of the nerves. Stenosis means what? Narrowing. So obviously there is a growth here. So there is a narrowing of what? Of the nerves. Nerves means what? The nostril openings, right? So obviously you can see here the nostril opening itself is getting narrowed. So it is stenosis of nerves. Distortion of upper lip. Upper lip also getting distorted. Adhesions in the nose. There is adhesions in the nose. Nasopharynx, oropharynx. There may be subglottic stenosis with respiratory distress. So obviously it is entering where from the nose 
all the nerves are all um, stenosed getting stenosed uh, there is distortion of upper lip also then it is going to nasopharynx oropharynx subglottis stenosis this is a specific word they are using subglottic stenosis with respiratory distress so you know what the glottis is right epiglottis so epiglottis you know that flap kind of thing glottis is here they are depicting right so there can be respiratory distress glottis look at look at another image here to represent the glottis okay so look at this one now glottis open glottis closed rima glottidis so we have now looked at the clinical features of rhinoscleroma so basically uh, can you um, just summarize what we have seen in clinical stages we saw atrophic uh, that foul smelling discharge and then uh, uh granulomatous the woody feel and then in uh, the third stage cicatricial stage the subglottis stenosis and all will be there right okay so now let us move on diagnosis how will you diagnose a person basically you will take a biopsy right that means you will take a sample of the tissue and then you will check it under the microscope and see what and all you will see from what biopsy infiltration of submucosa you will see biopsy shows infiltration of submucosa what and all will be there plasma cells lymphocytes eosinophils mucolytic cells and russell body so basically lymphocytes and all are very common for you right in any uh, tb and all that you have seen lymphocytes and all that these are all very standard right plasma cells eosinophils mucolytic cells and russell body so we need to understand what these are basically if you see diagnosis everything they're talking about is under biopsy only biopsy that will show these cells and these mucolytic cells and russell bodies are the diagnostic features what are mucolytic cells what are russell bodies that's it and you can see the causative organism also if you want you can culture it not see it but you can culture it right let us see what these are so here you have the microscopic image of the tissue so whatever arrow is pointing there those are mucolytic cells okay so these are foam cells so rhinoscleroma foamy uh, showing foamy mucolytic cells okay and then what and all you have russell body russell body is nothing but immunoglobulin right plasma cells immunoglobulins right and then what are uh, lymphocyte infiltration that they are showing here arrowheads see all these purple dots that you see all these are lymphocytes right obviously you can you that much you know right that much you know right and then you can see foam foam cells these uh, empty kind of cells right those are foam cells okay mucolytic cells lymphocytic infiltration those two things are shown in this diagram okay so now let us see uh, what are all mucolytic cells are large foam cells with central nucleus central nucleus and vacuolated cytoplasm containing causative bacilli so they are saying these mucolytic cells are large foam cells with central nucleus i didn't see the central nucleus let's check again vacuolated cytoplasm yes we can see lot of cytoplasm is so clear vacuolated cytoplasm yes containing causative bacilli that we don't know that we can't see here but the central nucleus they are saying where is the central nucleus here it's not very apparent okay now let's move on to the next thing here russell bodies now what are russell bodies basically you have russell bodies is very common in pathology you've heard in lot of places <clears throat> accumulation of immunoglobulin globulins so why do these occur because lot of immunoglobulins will be accumulated so this is the key word here for russell bodies <clears throat> so immunoglobulins right lot of immunoglobulins like this right you will draw immunoglobulins lot of immunoglobulins will be accumulated those are russell bodies so what these are homogeneous eosinophilic inclusion bodies found in plasma cells so inside plasma cells they are saying eosinophilic inclusion bodies so guys this is eosinophilic means what pink color so pink color inclusion bodies are there homogeneous pink color inclusion bodies are there in plasma cells okay what are these these contain immunoglobulins let's again write this plasma cell means what nothing but the b lymphocyte right plasma cell is nothing but b lymphocyte now b lymphocyte has lot of eosinophilic wait let's go back eosinophilic inclusion bodies means please give us eosin color eosinophilic inclusion bodies are there in this plasma cell what do these contain immunoglobulins these contain immunoglobulins who is secreting the immunoglobulins plasma cell itself so obviously this is kind of prepared ready i have prepared lot of immunoglobulins and kept okay 
So these are Russell bodies. Where exactly have you seen Russell bodies in pathology till now? In myeloma cells because um, this is also for basically it's also for uh, plasma cells right also seen in multiple myeloma right just to remind you so you can here they have marking russell bodies russell bodies eosinophilic inclusions in plasma cells right so what you should understand is the latter two that is the Kulix cells and Russell bodies are diagnostic features of the disease. So these are very important. Otherwise you can't diagnose so easily, right? Then you can take this uh, and you can try to culture this organism and you will grow a lot of Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis. Here uh, Wikipedia says Klebsiella they can grow on any ordinary medium. They don't need any special growth requirements. So you can just check what culture media they will grow on, okay? So now you have understood that it can lead to respiratory distress, etc. So cosmetically also it is looking bad. So how do you treat this rhinoscleroma after you diagnose it correctly that it is because of Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis? Obviously you will give antibiotics. So streptomycin, tetracycline. So you give then all this streptomycin, streptomycin, tetracycline. Tetracycline, okay, fine. So all this you will give, okay. So when you will uh, give this for long time, because these are all chronic, right? Like tuberculosis. So you will give them together. Oh, you will give them together. Interesting. You will give them together for minimum period of four to six weeks. And then you will repeat after one month. Treatment you should stop only when two consecutive cultures are negative. Pretty difficult, right? You have to treat this person long term. Then again, after one month, you will repeat. Then you will stop treatment only if Two consecutive cultures are negative. Okay. Steroids you can also give to reduce fibroids. You can combine the steroids with this. But that's kind of weird, right? You are immune suppressing and giving antibiotics. Okay. Surgical treatment may be required to establish the airway and correct nasal deformity. So to uh, correct the nasal deformity and to, surgic, uh, and to uh, establish the airway if airway has some issues. Then you'll have to do surgical treatment. Okay, guys. So is this clear? So let's just uh, wind up this video on rhinoscleroma. Rhinoscleroma is something to do with the nose. It's an ENT topic. So basically, granulomatous diseases of nose. We have we are seeing this one here, rhinoscleroma, and uh, it is caused by this bacteria, Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis. Look at the spelling: Klebsiella, S-I-E-L-L-A, -L -L Kleb, K-L-E-B, Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis. It's a gram-negative bacillus. That's why it's pink. And it's also called as F-R-I-S-C-H, Frisk Bacillus. What is this Frisk? There is some information here that this was um, found by, this bacteria was found by this person. Okay, hence the name. So basically this disease is quite there, so you should be aware of it. Okay, then um, a mode of infection, they don't know how exactly it happens. They don't know, uh, so anyways, that you can find out. Then what happens, it starts at nose and it affects upper lip and it also affects the nasopharynx, oropharynx, subglottis, uh, trachea, bronchi, etc. And then, um, let's move on. Clinical features, uh, three stages, atrophic stage, granulomatous stage and cicatricial stage. Atrophic stage resembles atrophic rhinitis, foul smelling, purulent nasal discharge, crusting, granulomatous stage. So basically, um, granulomatous nodules form in the nasal mucosa. Subdermal infiltration of lower part of external nose and upper lip, which gives a woody feel. Remember woody. Nodules are painless and non-ulcerative. That's a good thing. Okay. See, he's so happy. No ulceration, no pain. Okay. Then coming to cicatricial stage, um, there will be stenosis uh, of the nares, distortion of the upper lip, adhesions of the nose, nasopharynx, oropharynx. You'll forget these words. Remember, distortion of upper lip. Upper lip if it's affected, adhesions of the nose, nasopharynx, oropharynx, subglottic stenosis with respiratory distress. Okay, then uh, diagnosis, biopsy is the only thing they have mentioned here. Then you will take the biopsy, you will find in that lot of plasma cells, lymphocytes, eosinophils, Mikulix cells and Russell bodies. Remember Mikulix cells, Mikulix cells comes in what? Rhinoscleroma, rhinoscleroma. What will you see? This is a C, rhinoscleroma. What will you see? M-I-K. Miku, lick, L I C H is it? M Z. Oh my God, there's a Z here. 
Miku licks Z, okay, and Russell bodies, okay. So what are Miku licks cells? They are found in rhinoscleroma foam cells. Um, and central uh, large foam cells, central nucleus, vacuolated cytoplasm. What do they contain? They contain this bacilli, Klebsiella, uh, rhinoscleromatis. Then, Russell bodies are what? Uh, they are plasma cells which have homogeneous eosinophilic inclusion bodies, which have nothing but the immunoglobulins. Okay, and then you can take, uh, you can culture and uh, grow this Klebsiella also in microbiology lab. Rhinoscleroma pathology we have explained, lymphocytic infiltration, etc. Treatment, combination treatment of streptomycin with tetracycline. Streptomycin are you giving uh, in uh, TB? Yes, in tuberculosis also streptomycin use, it is used. It is aminoglycoside antibiotic. It is bactericidal, right? Remember all this. So what and all will you give for rhinoscleroma? Streptomycin plus tetracycline uh, together one month. Then again repeat for one month. Then you will stop the treatment only when two consecutive cultures are negative. Steroids can be added to reduce fibrosis. Surgical treatment will be required to establish the airway and to correct any nasal deformity. That's all. This is another thing we found on the internet. You can just look at this. So Mikulix is the person who described the histology, is it? Mikulix described the histology. Home cells. So these are the Klebsiella bacilli. So this Frisk identify the causative organism. So that is why it is called as Frisk bacilli. So many scientists here. That's all now. Uh, that's all for now, guys. See you in the next video. Bye bye.